So we would like to register the somatosensory evoked potential by stimulating the tibial nerve. We work for this with two channels. In one channel, we register from the lumbar spine. In the second channel, we will register on the skull from uh, CZ with the reference on FZ. So over here, you see the cables running from X4, the blue one, is the active uh, electrode put around L4 on the lumbar spine. The white cable is put on the crystal yaka as the reference. It's better to put the reference not too close to the active electrode, and that's why we put it on the crystal yaka and not on L2, which is mentioned in a lot of textbooks. The cables here on top is running to CZ, it's the yellow one, and FZ. You can see over there that we measure for yellow the line between the two ears, and in the middle is CZ. The green one, the reference, is FZ. It's on the uh, forehead, following the distribution of the uh, skull model for EEG. Finally, we have the ground electrode, and over here we put it on the chin. We ask the patient to relax completely, as is used for uh, evoked potential, so just leave the mouth a little bit open and close the eyes, but not too far away. On the screen, we can check the impedance by clicking on impedance, and then here have the impedance check, which is perfect to start the stimulation. We can start the stimulation by pressing the button STEM. And now we want to see the uh, big toe moving a little bit when we increase the stimulus intensity. So I increase the stimulus intensity, I look at the toes, and I see that the toes are moving a little bit. A little bit more, so now we are at the first hole. So far, the subject, the patient, does not suffer from the intensity, so we keep it at the 15 milliampers. So the patient is completely relaxed, and we will start the acquire button. It will run for uh, around um, 500 stimuli, 500 responses are averaged on top of each other. We put the rejection amplitude at 50 microvolts, so far, some of the lumbar answers are rejected. If needed, we can increase this rejection amplitude. As you can see, there are not too many artifacts, and we can already um, get the appearance of the uh, several responses needed. The lumbar answer over here, N22, and over here will be the P40, N50, and P60. After having completed the first trial with 500 responses, we will do another acquisition to see when the responses are rep reproducible. So from the skull, we got already 500 responses. As from the lumbar spine, there is rejection of a couple of them. We have to wait a little bit longer till 500 responses are captured. For the next uh, acquisition, we press again on acquire. As you can see, the answer is very nice uh, reproduced in the second recording compared to the first one. When all the recordings are finished, we will press on the summarize button over here. After I press this button, I can very easily put all the markers. So this is the result. We see over here the right stimulus latencies and amplitudes. Now let's move to the other side. We start the stimulus at 5 milliampers, which will be too low. Now I increase till I see the movement of the big toe. There is a twitch. The patient remains calm, so we can start our acquisition, stimulating the left tibial nerve and recording the same responses. We can start immediately our second acquisition when we reach both times five from left. The acquisition, the second acquisition, starts with the same stimulus strength as the first one, 18 milliampers. We check the little twitch of the big toe. Right. 
and over here, we have a level of N22, P40, N50, P60. On this panel, we see the latencies of the left stimuli, the latencies of the right stimuli, and over here, we also can differences, latencies between right and left. So all these values are within normal limits.